The streets of Paris suddenly flooded with yellow poisonous fog. People who inhaled the fog would die instantly. Then more poisonous fog came from all directions. People were scared and ran away. Matthew saw the danger and turned around and ran to his home. At that moment, the fog was like a huge wave that swallowed everything. Matthew desperately ran upstairs. He grabbed his wife Anna and was about to run for his life to higher ground. But at this time in the isolation chamber of his daughter is too late to move. But fortunately, the isolation chamber could purify the air. So she was safe for the time being. Matthew could only leave his daughter Sarah inside first. Although Anna still does not feel at ease. But Matthew understands that if we do not leave, it will be too late. Because the fog was spreading rapidly up the building. Matthew escaped with Anna all the way to the top floor. They frantically knocked on the neighbor's doors. They came to the balcony and was instantly stunned. The whole city was about to be flooded with toxic fog. The yellow fog was like a river that covered the whole street. Fortunately, the fog did not continue to rise. So the few people on the top floor were saved for the time being. Lucian asked Matthew where the fog was coming from. But Matthew did not know anything at this time. He only knew that once people inhaled the poisonous fog, they would definitely die. When Anna heard this, she grabbed the walkie-talkie and asked Sarah. She was relieved to know that her daughter was safe. It turns out that their daughter has been suffering from severe air allergies since she was a child. So she had always lived in an isolation chamber. But the sudden appearance of toxic fog led to a citywide power outage. Once the batteries in the isolation chamber ran out, Sarah would soon die of oxygen deprivation. Matthew said he could hold his breath and go downstairs to change the batteries. But Anna thinks that this is a way to hurt herself. She doesn't agree with her husband. Matthew suddenly thought of the neighbor's house downstairs as a spare oxygen bottle. So he holds his breath and climbs in through the pipe. However, when he entered the house, he found that the neighbor had already died. At this point Matthew could not hold his breath any longer. He hurriedly held a flashlight to look around. Finally at the last minute found the oxygen bottle. He hurriedly put on the mask and breathed heavily. He did not dare to stay a moment longer. Matthew rushed downstairs to find his daughter. He brought supplies to Sarah and replaced the spare batteries with new ones. Then he went out into the street. He tried to figure out what had happened and find help. But all around him was dead silence. The streets were littered with fallen bodies. While Matthew was gathering supplies, he suddenly heard strange noises in the distance. He rushed over to check it out. It turned out to be a rescue team evacuating the survivors. Matthew went up to him and asked him. But he didn't know what this poisonous fog was. He just urged Matthew to follow the team and leave. Matthew said he had his wife and daughter at home. He begged them to come to his rescue. But due to the time constraint and the lack of extra men, they just gave Matthew a set of oxygen bottles and left in a hurry. Matthew went back to the room and explained the situation to the group. They planned to stay where they were and wait for help. But that night, Matthew suddenly found that the fog was slowly rising. It didn't take long for the fog to overwhelm the building. The city was flooded with an unknown fog. Only the people on the top floor survived. But Matthew discovered by accident. The fog is rising at a regular pace. It will soon overwhelm their floor. This means they have to move to higher ground as soon as possible. But his daughter, who was in the isolation chamber, suffered from airborne allergies. Once she is exposed to the air, she is sure to die. So there was only one last option left. And that was to venture through the fog to the biology lab to find a protective suit. Matthew and Anna say goodbye to their daughter Sarah. They walk through the streets filled with dead bodies to the lab. But the place is also in a mess. Luckily, the suits were still intact. The two of them rushed to take it and were about to leave. But suddenly there was a violent explosion in one of the labs. They were tossed to the ground by the explosion. Matthew's clothes were also set on fire. Anna rushed to find a fire extinguisher to put out the fire. But Matthew's oxygen tube was burned off and could not be used. They had to take turns breathing oxygen and dragged the box upwards with difficulty. They found a room on the top floor to rest briefly before going back to save Sarah. But at this time, the only remaining oxygen bottles are almost exhausted. The two of them are destined to return only one of them. Matthew decisively gave Anna the chance to live. He let her go back with the protective suit, although Anna was very reluctant. But she had to do it to save her daughter Sarah. She said goodbye to Matthew and dragged the case all the way home. But just as she reached the floor, she found that the oxygen had also run out. The woman threw away her oxygen tank and held her breath as she climbed upstairs. She finally made it out of the fog at the last minute. 
but before she could catch her breath, she found that the bottom of the box was actually blown out a big hole. Anna panicked and rushed to open the box, but she found that the protective suit had been burned and could not be used. Anna was devastated. This is her husband's hope for her daughter's survival in exchange for his life. But now this hope of survival is gone. At the same time, on the other side, Matthew was looking for a way home along the roof of the building. When he climbed to a roof, he suddenly found a pool of blood on the ground. He looked at the blood stain. A dead body appeared behind the car. Puzzled, Matthew walks into the room. He finds that there is a camp here, and there were a lot of survival supplies inside. Matthew looked around and saw that no one was there. He rushed forward to pick up the oxygen tank and was about to leave. But the next moment a policeman appeared and stopped him. Matthew instantly understood what the corpses outside were all about, so he quietly opened the oxygen tank. When the police officer was about to draw his gun and shoot the moment, Matthew lunged and dragged him into the fog. Then they fought to the death. Matthew was able to breathe because of the oxygen, so he tightly strangled the police officer's neck. The police officer did not breathe because he inhaled the fog. Sarah at home said the isolation chamber was running out of power. There is already a toxic fog began to seep in. Anna was now completely panicked. She she decided to hold her breath and go downstairs to change Sarah's battery, despite the efforts of her neighbor Lucian to discourage her. But at this point, she could not care less. The woman looked at the fog in front of her and took a deep breath. However, she did not hesitate to rush in, because her daughter's isolation chamber was about to lose power. Some of the fog had already seeped in. Anna ran desperately to the floor. Her daughter, who was staying inside the chamber, saw that she did not have her oxygen mask on. She urged her mother to leave quickly, but Anna ignored her. She just rushed to find batteries to replace the isolation chamber. Anna saw that the isolation capsule started working again before she was relieved to leave. But Sarah waited for a while and found that no sound came from her mother's walkie-talkie. Sarah realized that her mother might be dead. At that moment, the girl's father also happened to arrive home. He heard Sarah say that his wife had been here but without her mask, so he rushed off to look for her. However, he found Anna's body in the hallway. Matthew is distraught, but he has to complete his mission to save Sarah for the sake of Anna's last wish. Another earthquake strikes. Matthew realizes that the poisonous fog has begun to spread across the balcony. He realized that time was running out, so he tried to take the two elderly neighbors with him to escape, but they refused because they didn't want to drag him down. They said they had been happy all their lives. There was nothing left for them. Matthew came outside the quarantine chamber. He told Sarah that he would get her out. But Sarah didn't want her father to leave her, because her mother had died trying to save her. She didn't want to lose the last of her family. But Matthew had to get Sarah out no matter what. He suddenly remembered that he had seen a protective suit in a car. So he sets out to find it. Matthew went to the car and managed to get the suit. Then he found an available motorcycle and drove quickly towards his home. Suddenly a little boy came out in front of him. Matthew dodged and fell hard on the side of the road and passed out. When Matthew woke up again, he didn't know what time it was. Matthew grabbed the walkie-talkie and limped forward. But no matter how much he called out to Sarah, he didn't get any reply. Matthew sat on the floor in despair. He tried his best, but he couldn't save his daughter. Suddenly Matthew saw two figures emerge not far away. Matthew got closer to see. It turned out to be his daughter and her friend. What surprised Matthew even more was that both children actually did not wear oxygen masks. Sarah explained that the toxic fog is not harmful to people with air allergies like them. Her friend found this out and came to her rescue. Matthew was overjoyed. He hugged Sarah with excitement. He is relieved that Sarah has a new lease on life. The story switches scenes a bit. Matthew wakes up from the isolation chamber, and the children with air allergies who were living in the isolation chamber. Now they are running happily in this new world. This is the end of the movie. Although the whole film does not explain where the poisonous fog actually comes from, but we can venture a guess. Maybe all this is nature's punishment for human beings. And in the end, those children who were once considered as abnormal have now become the hope of a new world. Maybe they are the last mercy left by nature to mankind. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.